Welcome to the guide at Fish North Georgia. Brought to you by these fine sponsors. Spro, working with America's best anglers to design the world's finest fishing tackle. Nichols Lures, handcrafted to perfection. Georgia Blade, makers of premium fishing lures for over three decades and home to the Georgia Jig. Crypto Bass, tournament grade, Georgia made. And be sure to visit fishnorthgeorgia.com. Now here's Sammy Benitez. Hey guys, Sammy Benitez here with Fish North Georgia The Guide. And today I'm going to tell you about my most recent trip to Lake Pettit, which is in the Big Canoe community in Jasper, Georgia. Again, this is private community, so you can get in if you by invitation, if you know somebody that lives there. Uh, stock with trout. It's got largemouth bass. They've got some big brim. Um, and there's a few other species available to catch as well. We were targeting bass on this particular trip specifically. Uh, we've heard there's some big ones in there, and we were trying to target them. Uh, so let me tell you how we did it, how we approached it. So to begin, we went early in the morning. Water temperatures were high 50s, 58, 57 early in the morning. And as the day progressed, it got to about 65 almost by the evening, the end of the day. Um, but uh, we found that these bass were pre-spawn pre -spawn areas, so they weren't up in the dead shallows just quite yet. Um, we didn't really see maybe one spawner the whole day, and we went into every cove in there. It's about a 100-acre lake, so it's not huge. Um, but we were focusing on secondary points. So the way I break it down is you have main lake, maybe this big pond, and there's a couple channels coming in. That first point where it deviates from the main lake into the creek channel, that's a main lake point. Everything beyond that to the back of the creek is what is considered a secondary point. So if the if the the land deviates and comes out and comes back in, that would be considered a point. If you got a tree sticking out, that would be a secondary point. So anything like that, anything that is abnormal to just the straight line from that main lake point all the way to the back of the creek channel is what we were focusing on. Uh, what we found to be the most effective was a square bill, uh, specifically the Little John. So this right here is what I've been throwing over there at Lake Pettit. And it has kind of a trout color to it. It's translucent. This dives five, six feet maybe. Um, and that's what we were targeting, really that five to ten foot range um, for that those pre-spawn bass. So this, when once we figured out the Little John specifically, we tried a bunch of other colors, a bunch of different square bills. Uh, but this one in particular, uh, we caught so many fish on. A few other colors as well, but other square bills didn't produce the same as the Little John. And you can see it's kind of a flat-sided square bill. And the rattles in here just has like a silent thump, not really a, a rattle or a knock. And for whatever reason, the bass there love that. So we caught a lot of fish on that, uh, a little bit more of a chartreuse color because the water clarity was maybe about four feet of visibility, which is dirty for big canoe. Um, then it got a lot more clear on the main lake areas. It was, you can still see maybe 10 foot down. Um, but that little John, biggest producer. And then uh, as well as like a Kai Tech or a Rage Swimmer, any kind of paddle tail. This is a four and a half, so this is a little bigger than we were throwing all day. We were focusing more on the 3.3 to 3.8 size. So here's a couple smaller ones. This is a good color for when the water was clear and when the water was dirtier. This chartreuse and blue also produced some good bites. Um, so paddle tails, they're, they're feeding, they're stocking up before the spawn. They're, they're trying to get a good meal in. So this produced some good bites as well. And I got several bites on this Georgia Blades jig. You can see this fall crawl looking color. This is what I've been throwing and this is what I'm going to keep throwing probably for another month or so. Um, you can see this head is pretty worn the color. The, uh, the paint is coming off already. Um, but I was catching these close to timber on some of these drop offs. Some, some of these, that big canoe has significant drop offs. I don't know how they do it, how they control the erosion, but it can be two foot of water and then it'll drop to 30 foot straight down. Uh, but kind of working that really shallow, usually there'd be a fish up in there close to timber. That's where I was throwing the jig and that's where I was catching those fish. So then the other thing that was working really well is a Ned rig. 
Uh, so green pumpkin color, anything green pumpkin with some kind of flake, something I would recommend. It tries to mimic maybe a bluegill or a craw. Uh, but I was throwing this in a 1 15th ounce head. So if there's a lot of wind, throw something heavier. Uh, but if there's no wind, the lighter the better. It has just a slow fall, slow action. Uh, it gets a lot more bites the lighter you can, the, the more you can finesse it basically. So basically those four lures, a paddle tail, a little john, square bill specifically, uh, the Ned Rig and a jig are all great pre-spawn baits to be thrown on Big Canoe as well as many other bodies of water. Um, so if you got any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Hope this helps you out on your recent trips to Big Canoe. And we will catch you on the next one. Peace, guys. Thanks for watching the guide here at Fish North Georgia. Our mission is to build a community of anglers to give you the best and latest information to make your day on the water more successful. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, click the bell so you'll be notified of any future content. Make sure you check us out at fishnorthgeorgia.com where we carry a large variety of bait manufacturers from here in the North Georgia area. So we appreciate you being part of our community and we'll see you soon.